You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Amelia. Here's a bit of car world news for you. Kia and Hyundai are connected. A lot of the same people work on developing cars for both companies and their models share a lot of solutions. For example, Albert Bierman, the guy who used to create BMW M models, now works for Hyundai, developing beasts like the i30N that I recently reviewed. Well, he also made the lovely Stinger, which we also recently reviewed. And if you liked that one, we'll have another Stinger here soon as well. But back to the point. This is just an example of how Kia and Hyundai have been making vehicles that have been skipping quality tiers in the past decade, and they've been doing it really well. So the car I have here is the latest 2019 facelift of their midsize SUV model. It's a Kia Sorento, and it's the largest SUV they have. This is the latest version of this car, and in one of the most competitive, if not actually the most competitive segments of the industry at the moment. If it's to be a success, it has to be awesome. So is it? Let's find out. There are four trim levels on offer in Australia, SI, Sport, SLI and GT line. I have the Sport, which is actually the second lowest. So basically, if I like this one, there are two that are even better. In terms of design, the latest Sorento sits somewhere between an SUV and a minivan. It is a crossover, but if I had to choose, I'd say it's an SUV. The front is, is a bit car-like, but then it has this added section down the bottom. This narrowing of the parts resulted in a clean look despite the size. The headlights are a bit different than on the pre-facelift model, as are the fog lights, which look far better now. The grille shape is the same, but the elements within it are different. The side has gentle bulges, which give it some flair, but do not hamper the elegance. While the rear is pretty much the same, aside from the subtle changes in the bumper and tail lights arrangement, this sport version comes standard with 18-inch wheels, while the entry-level SI has 17-inch wheels, and at the top of the offer, the GT line, has 19 inch alloys. There are two engine options in Australia. The first one is a 2.2 litre diesel with 147 kilowatts of power and 441 newton metres of torque. The second one is a 3.5 litre petrol with 206 kilowatts of power and 336 newton metres of torque. The one I have here is petrol. The Sorento can be four wheel drive and it has central locking diff. That's also another reason why I would say it's closer to being an SUV. But I don't have that one. I have a two wheel drive version and it's paired with an eight speed automatic. The 3.5 is punchy enough, but not really spectacular. Expectedly, the torque comes pretty high up in the rev range, so if you want the torque, the diesel is probably a better option, as it has 105 newton metres more, and they come from just 1,750 revs. The petrol does feel like it packs more power. It feels solid on the road, and bumps are sorted out rather well without the Sorento feeling too wallowy. So the body roll isn't as noticeable as I would have expected, but I would like a little more feel from the steering. Yes, it is a Sorento, so it's geared towards comfort, which it definitely feels comfortable to drive in. I can imagine family trips to Melbourne would be a breeze. If I had to choose one word to describe driving in the Sorento, what would it be? Hmm, I would say relaxed. Despite the large power figure, I can assure you, there is no sporty driving in the Sorento. It's competent at best, and probably meant to be just that. We can see that from the suspension tune and gearbox reactions. Speaking of which, the 8-speed automatic is very smooth and, once again, relaxed. There are no lightning fast reaction times, but it always feels fit and comfortable. It is worth noting that the towing capacity of the Sorento with the automatic is 2,000 kilograms, while the manual can tow 500 kilograms more. Nobody buys a Sorento for its racing. Most people buy it for its comfort, spaciousness and tech perks and you'll find those on the inside. Driver's position is great. There is loads of space, controls are easy at hand, and the screen is also close and well positioned. It also includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. Design-wise, it's rather nice, but not overly special in any way. What I really like is a fit and finish. Materials are good, and the whole car feels very solid from the front. A lot of things look the part, even if they're not, but they actually do a better job, if that makes sense. So for example, this top dash here looks like leather, it's clearly not, it feels more like rubber, but to me, that's a good thing, especially when you have children. Leather seats are standard on all but the entry trim and they are very comfortable. Higher trim levels also get more ways to adjust the position of the seat and lumbar support. Again, these leather seats here aren't exactly a soft plush leather, but they're hopefully and most likely more resilient. Storage space in the front is ample as well. Cup holders are on the central console and this deep bin is very practical. If you don't want to use the smaller items in the depths of the bin, you can use this little tray as well. Door pockets can also hold a nice big bottle. Second row legroom is awesome. There is just so much space and even the tallest passengers should have no problemo with their big long BFG legs. It's also got that flat floor in the second row, making it even more spacious. Headroom is very good too, but will become 
become less accommodating if you opt in for the panoramic roof. Want more? The second row seats both slide and recline. Now, look, that is more of a common function nowadays, but I don't think I've seen any that recline to this level. Pair that with the amazing legroom, and I dare say the second row in the Sorrento is one of the best in its class. Perfect for those long trip snoozers. Of course, you also get cup and bottle holders, chargers, and access to the rear through this middle seat fold down. The third row? Well, there's just one slight problem in that it's a little tricky to get in. From what I can tell, and look, I could be wrong, but the seat doesn't flip up all the way over to give you access to get in. You can only sort of slide it as far as it can possibly go, which doesn't really allow for super convenient access to access the third row. Once you do get in, you'll see that the leg room is actually surprisingly good, even when the second seats are pushed back as far as I can possibly go. Still, I'm a fairly normally sized adult and I can sit here quite comfortably, even if the person sitting in front is terribly inconsiderate. I won't enjoy headroom and knee angle, but that's okay. Having in mind that kids are most often here, there should be no issues with space whatsoever. There is also a bin and a cup holder for each side. With all seven seats up, the boot space is not very practical. As you can see, it is just 142 litres and it does fall a bit behind some of its rivals. Folding the third row is not electric, but it is very easy. No strength needed whatsoever. After you do fold it down, the boot space is massive and perfectly flat. Need more space? Folding the second row is done by pulling on these levers in the back and then you get bed size proportions and a flat loading floor. Really nice and easy. I also like that there's these little hooks to keep the seat belts out of the way. And I also like that there's this low cover space, which is removable you know, in case you don't need it. In some cars and models, it just sits awkwardly, but not here. The Sorento in the sports trim is also pretty safe with features such as ABS, electronic stability control with traction control, vehicle stability management, hill start assist, front and rear parking sensors, rear view camera with dynamic guidelines, automatic headlights, lane keep assist, autonomous emergency braking, forward collision warning system, driver attention alert, keyless entry and tailgate release. Higher trim levels include more perks like blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alert and 360 camera. So is it good enough? Considering the price and the perks you get, I would have to say yes. Sure, there are more upmarket versions, but they cost far more. Sorrento pricing starts at just under $44,000 and it works their way up to $64,000 for the top of the line GT diesel. What you get with the Sorrento is good design, spacious, well laid out interior, great materials, loads of practicality and a really comfortable ride. And a car you should definitely consider buying if you are looking for a seven seater SUV. Thanks for watching Cartel TV. Now make sure you've subscribed. And if you are interested in buying a Kia Sorento or any other car, make sure you visit cleverbuys.com.au. Just a few simple steps and dealers from all around Australia will submit their very best offer straight to you.